God was sort of bringing all these new thoughts to us of how to do school differently, he would speak to me in the night and say things and wake me up and I'd be like, wow. Yes, I want to see someone's family economic situation turn around. But maybe I'm dreaming too big, but I want to see the world change. That revival is family. Mm. And Bill always has the statement that the light that shines the furthest shines the brightest at home. After like, I don't know, the 17th, 18th, 19th conversation, I was like, this is spiritual. This is crazy. I thought it was just the way I processed the world. I didn't, I didn't realize this was discernment in action. Angela, what up? How you doing? Man, I'm doing well. It's good to be with you. Hey, so we're here. Yes. Is, is this called the Transformation Building? Is that what somebody called it? Like, so this is another building with uh, on one of our one of our campuses. So we have eight or nine buildings total, kind of the Bethel That's incredible. campuses. So this is this houses um, most of the outreach departments, global legacy uh, missions. Um, it just it's probably like 15 different departments here that um, all use this building so there is the transformation center that's a part yeah. of it mm -hmm. so, so you have you actually have like homeless people that are coming in the building hundred yeah. percent yeah and yep. coming up to the gate and then yeah. they're getting resources and stuff yep and then if you go down another hallway there's like the moral revolution office Correct. If you yep. go down another hallway you might find the, the love after the marriage Bran yeah the Branham yep. conference room yeah which I did a selfie in front of that that's awesome uh, that's yep. you go upstairs and there's Yep. stuff up there global <laughs> legacy which is now the bethel's leaders network okay yeah yeah and yeah and you just kind of move through steve backlin has space up there okay and you okay. just kind of different departments the school planting um short-term missions they just moved to another building we just um acquired and then we've got uh um the oh alumni department it goes on and on and on yeah, yeah. man so like okay so like it's taken off and, mm -hmm. and you guys are just getting started but you've you've actually been you've been here for a while like you've seen so much yeah like i think about the city where i'm from newcastle like now it's this hip little kind mm -hmm. of like burbs but like when i was a kid growing up there it was just the sticks yeah so uh, probably a similar kind of thing for you yes. here in reading correct and seeing just reading transform but yep. then also seeing Bethel Church just completely transform and bring transformation. Completely. I grew up actually next to you in, in Bremerton, Washington. Yeah, that's so right. So lived there that's for right. 26 years. But I've been coming down to Reading since 2000, 2001 time frame. Oh, my goodness. So uh, the connections that, that connected us, uh, Mike and Penny, uh, I married their daughter. And yes. so they brought me back yes, down with did. the team <laughs> and right after I got saved. And it just uh, it wow. ignited something in my wow. heart and fueled already what God was doing. And and, uh, I just fell in love with this place, and so been here since 2007. Uh, Bethel 2001. What what was that like? Um, there were banners all around the sanctuary that were like it was that old. Yeah, like... yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, they were beautiful, but it was a different uh, different look. On uh, it was very. I mean, everything was just old school. Sure. Um, in terms of the look. But the heart was beautiful. Just a lot of, uh, I remember nights of people just lined up getting ministered to. I remember one time I came down here and uh, a guy named Cleddy Keith grabbed me and had me just follow him. And we're, the, everybody was lined up on the lines. I was just laying hands on people, following him and just seeing God move through me. And it's just another, that, uh, that, that, that. That other reality of, you know, just like, wow, God's using him and God's using me. And it was just instant empowerment every time I came down here. That's amazing. It. That's yeah. amazing. All right. So um, uh, you are overseeing uh, all the outreach teams here for BSSM. Correct. The school ministry. And um, so if you're doing outreach and you're serving the city and, and you're you're reaching the unreached mm -hmm. and you, you have to have a certain kind of heart, you have to have a certain kind of way of thinking, a certain way yeah. that you see people. So take us back, man, where, wherever you want to take us back to. What, what, like, have you always had a love for, for people? Uh, yeah. Has there always been a heart to serve? Like, It's a great question. You know, um, when I got saved, it kind of, I was like a, a John chapter four woman at the well experience where um, I got saved in a house in Belfair, kind of in the sticks. Um, I kind of got 
tricked by a friend to come. It was uh, they had a son that played for the University of Washington. Okay, yeah. And then they were feeding uh, all these men food, and so I'm a young man, free food, and and get to kind of glean from an athlete. Absolutely. And I was like, okay, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> When I went there, though, the family, I just saw such an authentic love of God. And wow. I didn't grow up in the church. Very uh, dysfunctional family. Tried their best, but, um, you know, just did the best that they could with mm -hmm. some of the, the struggles, the cycles that they even inherited. And so this family, uh, man, they just started literally talking about the miracles of God. Like they didn't know anything about Bethel. And it was like a setup. So I start hearing about how their wife had been ran over and um, crushed, wasn't supposed to have kids, had these three beautiful boys. She'd been completely healed. Um, so you were just going, it's not like a, a home meeting or something. Like you're just going to hang out with this family at their, at their house. It was a house, but it was maybe to me, it was like, come hang hear about god okay so it was sure. that and, and eat food okay so um, god was a part of the yeah, invite 100 okay, it right. was so it was like a house church okay and um and they just loved jesus right out of their house man <laughs> and awesome. they had great food and uh but i remember <laughs> i encountered the love of god right there and he he did something that marked me um which was um he did something that marked me which was uh he shared all these stories they displayed the love of God in such a, a profound way that it, it captured my heart. It really did. And I, if you want me to share some of my yeah, story yeah, behind yeah. that, I could. But, but then he, he, shut, he read the Great Commission. He shut the Bible and he said, now you go do it. And he just he empowered me right from the get-go and uh and so literally me and my buddies we started to do it and i i didn't i always share with this it's kind of like that acts chapter three you know i don't have this you know silver and gold i don't have but what i do have sure, i'm going to give sure, you sure and i knew i'd encounter the love of god in such a profound way and it, it was just it, it arrested my heart and um and I was like, I know people need this. So I had tons of friends. Was there like a, a sinner's prayer kind of moment? Like where you're like, dear Jesus, or was it just like you were just filled with belief and you just knew that it was on? Yeah. he. I, you know, I can't fully remember the, he actually took out a check and like did this cool, like almost like prophetic I wouldn't know what prophetic means at the time, but it was like, <laughs> it was like cashing everything into the Lord. And it, it, it was just, it. It, I remember everybody went to go watch football games afterwards, and I said, tell me more. And I, I didn't want to come for God, but when they went to go watch football, I didn't want to leave him. Wow. And so, yeah, there was a complete repentance. There was a complete <laughs> turning, awesome. understanding what I've been forgiven from, and inviting Jesus into my heart. And it was it was a powerful moment. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. It actually led to where I got to lead both my parents to the Lord. That's incredible. Saw my mom delivered off methamphetamines That's overnight. That's incredible. Wow. And literally started discipling all these overnight. young kids. Overnight. Yeah, my mom got completely set free. Um, I got to I got to go with her, that's flushing incredible. her her drugs down the wow. down the the toilet, and um, that's amazing. And this was over a period like God starts speaking to me right away, and uh, I I I was a athlete. I was passionate about sports, and I remember telling the Lord like, as passionate as I was about sports, I'm going to be that way for you. And everything was culminating before I went to this meeting. Like I had, I was supposed to be one of the star athletes of, of the school I went to, Bremerton High School. Okay. And then um, in, in my year and, you know, captain of basketball, baseball, football, um, just passionate about leadership and, and going to the next level and wanted to play college. And anyway, my ankle breaks, my mom's getting the car repossessed, the house is in foreclosure, and literally everything's falling apart. And there was that but God moment. He came in, uh, ended up having a, a surgery on my ankle, but the doctor looked at me and said, uh, before I had it, he said, you can hang up your sports career. Like, it's not going to be able to be repaired repaired and uh, had the surgery had these people pray for my ankle and it was like i was running on clouds wow um, ended up playing two years of college basketball that's incredible. at olympic college we got to lead my whole college basketball team to the lord that's incredible with my coach and it was just these divine moments of like um god showing up like that woman at the well where 
I encountered his love and just kept giving to give it out to individuals. And so I, that's how I entered and that's been my heart ever since. Um, and so that's what I get to do for a living now that's is, amazing. is empower people. That's amazing. That's, yeah. I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. And then, um, all right. So you, you came here, you're like, man, this place is amazing. Every time I come here to, mm-hmm. to Bethel church here in Reading, every time I come here, I feel so empowered. Totally. At what point are you like, I'm moving. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm making the leap. Yep. I'm going all in. Yeah, we, uh, my wife and I were married into our first year of marriage, and, um, and that's just an amazing story. We got blessed with like this phenomenal home for the first year of our marriage, and, uh, and um, you know, we're kind of probably six to eight months, um, there's a bunch of stories, but the heartbeat of it is we just like felt that heartbeat like that's our tribe for this season, and let's go down there. Yeah. And, uh, and move down and and just kind of it's like a seed in the right soil that was able to blossom and this was kind of like that greenhouse for me to be able to um because up up where i was it was like i was wanting to do all this stuff and didn't have the grace interesting um and i was supposed to be up there but man when i came down here it was like literally right away they're like would you preach at one of our uh we do a big holiday feast every year and nobody knew who i was but yeah. i had known chris overstreet for years okay and he's like would you preach at the second we we had two big overflow rooms which would you preach at that and people are like who is this guy yeah and literally i was just like felt like oh man i'm like f- i'm flying you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. i'm getting to do what's in my heart yeah and um, another great story when i first got saved um I was so passionate about taking people to church. We didn't have um, a church in our area in Bremerton that it was really, I was connecting with at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met a youth pastor out at um, South Tacoma Way, James Ludlow. I don't know if you know him up in Bonnie Lake. Uh, he's, he's an amazing, he, I do, he pastors I met him. East Point. Yes, yes, so he yes. was a youth pastor at um, Church for All Nations. So we would take carloads of people out there every Wednesday, every Sunday, I was discipling. So much so that my dad, he's not even saved yet and he's taking people to church in vehicles for us because I've got so many vehicles. So I buy this big purple van because I couldn't afford a bus. I was trying to buy a bus, couldn't afford a bus. Everybody's laughing at me because this young man basketball player driving this big purple van awesome, around awesome. you know but it's the it's the, the most mobile. seats yeah, that i could yeah. afford um and anyway um i remember a dream that i had for buses i moved down here and right when i get hired they say you're the bus pastor here's your fleet of buses wow and you're going to wow. oversee bringing all these people to church and it was like this other thing of god just kissing those dreams of the heart that were in the past like i didn't forget about that's incredible. your desire that's amazing. to like bring people in that's and amazing. so yeah um it was just felt like family from the get-go yeah and then at what point did that become like uh uh i hate to even say it but a job yeah. like you know like i don't know if it still has. It's, it's, like, not, it's not even like a yeah, you know yeah you it, know i'm sure it, it doesn't feel like a job but at what point was it like mm-hmm. you know hey we want you we want you part of our team here yeah. you know we see what's on your life you know what's what's awesome and i love sharing this with individuals i kind of fell into this by accident okay so i um i just had a passion to serve my buddy Chris Overstreet and help push him into his dreams. Awesome. That's and amazing. And so as I'm serving, I'm literally, um, before I'm hired, I'm running um, Friday night outreaches. Saturday, we take uh, food to eight locations in our city, make all the food, take it, and just minister. I'm running that. And then I'm helping run our Sunday morning breakfast where we bring in 250 to 350 people. Every Sunday? Every Sunday. We, we cook a amazing meal and then we don't make them go to church but we bring people we bring church to them that's incredible and so we do it right over our main campus that's incredible and so i'm thrusted in for five years and i'm just running but right out of the get-go i'm just like how can i serve him and uh, i remember having a talk with my wife and saying um i really feel like i'm supposed to serve him it's going to cost us but i feel like the lord's going to make it up like are you okay with that Wow. And and she's wow. like, yeah. And I was like, it's a season, not a lifestyle. Sure. But there were those sure. sacrifices where getting calls and it's like, could you cover this last minute? And uh, and just having a yes already in the heart. So wow. serving him uh, pushed him into some of his dreams, which caused a vacuum. And it sucked me up into the roles that I was doing. And so I did them for almost three years before I got hired. And then they're like, could we hire you to do this? And so that's kind of, I did first year school of ministry, second year, and then they just hired me right after second year. And, uh, and 
Yeah. So that's incredible. And I, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that's the, that's pretty typical in the kingdom, right? Because I, like Jesus said, if you want to be great totally. in the kingdom, mm-hmm. learn to be a servant, and right? Like it, figure figure this yeah. thing out because it's the it's the doorway by totally. which you know. And, and I had a ministry. I felt like God said, "Shut it all down, just serve." And I did. I shut down a website I just built and all this, you know. Uh, all this stuff and I just felt like the Lord said shut it down that's incredible don't worry about your dreams right now serve somebody else that's incredible and uh, and it's cool because the dreams that I had like accelerate I remember I was sitting in a room with uh, Reinhard Bonnke at a table just five of us and I got invited to a school of evangelism because of serving and it was like all these things happen I had so many dreams happen when I laid down my dreams and served somebody else's and, it, and whether they would have happened or not the reward was just like like the people that we got to touch in the heartbeat, but it was it was really cool to see um, how God cares about the little things. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, you know what I think is interesting about serving is that um, uh, sometimes there's a mindset associated with like like a servant, mm-hmm. kind of like yeah, that, that that that's beneath me. But really, like and the ways that 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 we're capable of serving, yeah, really, it, there's nobody else that can serve the way that we can totally, serve totally. Be, because of not, not just our gift mix, but mm-hmm. our personalities, the way we see the world, the way we see opportunities in in crisis that kind of thing so i think that that's where oftentimes um uh people miscalculate what it means totally totally. to 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 serve it Mm -hmm. but i think what you shared is such a huge key Mm -hmm. such a huge breakthrough key is is to just pray and ask the lord like hey i oftentimes especially when we feel stuck Mm -hmm. right and we feel like there's no doors only walls you know, it's kind of like, well, just pray and ask the Lord, who can you serve in such a special, unique way that mm-hmm. nobody else could kind of fit that that spot? So, man, I love totally. that, that. I mean, the your... Bible says what? The greatest in the kingdom is a servant. And even in this environment now, I still serve Chris. Like, I bend my schedule as I'm still, he's launched out to the Portland area. Um, and uh, we just did a big event up in Oregon and still shifting my schedule to like a uh, lifelong friend. And I would always encourage I see it with our our senior leaders here. They bend to serve each other, and um, there's just a safety and a covering and a health in the body, always pouring back into each other. You know what I mean? Awesome. Hey, so let's dive into your relationship with Chris. Um, yeah. Because it sounds like there's just something very special there, mm-hmm. very covenant there. So yeah. how, how did that happen? When you guys met, did it just click right off the bat, or you know, you know like I, how did that how did that come together? I remember I was down here at a, a Jesus Culture event and they did a big outreach and I happened to get thrown in Chris's group. We went to the streets and I just saw how he loved people in such authentic way. And, um, and man, he helped activate some stuff in me and the prophetic and, and just like helped blow wind in the sail of my heart. And uh, we just connected from the get go. So I'd come down and stay at his house. We'd That's go awesome. to the streets. Yeah. We had him up in the Seattle area, a few are in the Bremerton area years ago to do a, a event on kind of the Kidsat Peninsula side. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, we've just been friends ever since work out together play fun and do ministry together yeah. that's awesome that's awesome so now you're so okay so you're overseeing um our all the outreaches correct yeah for bssm mm-hmm. and that's a pretty big deal now yes. right like yep. so how many students are actually in bssm now yep we have around 1200 in first year 900 in second year and around 450 in third year so my role is mobilizing all three of those years in effective outreaches that serve our city we say carry supernatural heart with servant hands and and we carry that to the city and uh, really trying to not just do an outreach but help that the the city service is what we call it but it's a springboard into a lifestyle so how do we give them space to step out and activate what they're learning on a weekly basis so how do you do that you know what it's uh <laughs> It's, we have over 200 teams that go out a week in Reading, and then we, we send out, this year we're sending out uh, once a month teams to universities of about 40 students, so that's eight universities uh, that are overnight trips, and um, that's, so there's 64 of those, and it's, it's honestly, I have a phenomenal team, it's kind of like, you see like, like, you know, the, uh, a sports team, it's the, our motto is teamwork makes the dream work. Wow. So wow. we're all... Uh, we have our busy seasons like right now we're literally launching and doing all the trainings and and uh, 
there's the planning and it's just we have such a beautiful team that um you just you learn the rhythms and we have an amazing community of people that come along so there's literally within that there's about 70 overseers that we're empowering students with that we're making sure that there's pathways created in every one of those that the students can run serve and activate so how do you do it? Uh, it's like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Yeah, come <laughs> you know on, what I mean? Come on, come on. That's my next question. <laughs> no, it, okay, so now, it, it, I can't imagine. I mean, sending out 200 people to do these outreaches mm -hmm. week after week. I mean, th these are like waves that are just yeah. going out over the city. Mm -hmm. So what, like, what, what's the fruit that you've seen in yeah. the region as a result of just like bathing the city in yep. this kind of intentional totally, totally. love yep. bathing or whatever you want to call it i'm tired <laughs> yeah we have you know it, it we have everything from retirement we're in quite a few of our retirement really? centers wow um we're in the, the juvenile halls we're in uh, quite a bit of the elementary schools uh mm -hmm. middle schools high schools and so you so see, it's not just it's not just going out and like track bombing or, no, or just going no, out no. and giving giving out words of knowledge no, like you guys are intentionally we're partnering with trenching in 100 percent. and what we love is this the, the the pillars of this and i'd say um there's there's seventy percent is local church that has a heart for something, and so we're finding where there's passions in the local church's heart. They're like, I want to lead this, and then the students are f like waves of passion, fire, and focus because they're here, they're ready to serve. That we can then pour out. So that's some of our our secret sauces. Like, so they're actually going out into local churches in the in well, the. Our local, so we have our school okay. of ministry, okay. then we have the local church people that aren't a part of the school, okay, yeah. and then we have the kind of the movement side, people coming and going, conferences, training and equipping. Wow. And so um, part of the secret sauce is finding those local church people that have a dream in their heart, and then they're like, I have this, but how do we execute it? Like we had a lady that has an extreme passion to serve single moms. So I'm like, let's meet. We'll give you tons of students. Um, you can, we do like interviews and background checks and make sure they're all safe and solid. And then we help her kind of build something that's in her heart and then send them out. And so she's been doing it each year, it grows. And that's kind of how a lot of this started, super organic. And then finding passions in people's hearts, then it just blossoms as they as they even see like wow god's breathing on this and god's using me and and then you get students from all over the world that are like championing and it's this beautiful that's awesome. synergy so that's that's how a lot of it then we just have tons of organizations like if anybody reaches out this is and i just shared this in school we have this beautiful picture of, of bill johnson in the 70s big bell bottoms and he's standing in front of this um outreach center called the salt house okay and uh he's so he's out there in the 70s right where her students go and doing the stuff and i always tell our students that um First, we thank them, and we even we realize that they're coming in with a history from their local churches. So we're we're very aware that we're partnering with all these local churches around the world that have sown from when these kids were, you know, even little. They're coming here, getting an infusion from us, and then pouring it into our city. So we're always very aware that we're receiving so much from other churches and then it's we're adding an infusion and then it's pouring out into our city but i also communicate to our students like bethel has been pouring into this city since the 50s wow so you're yeah. coming in to a wave of momentum and yeah, relationships and everything with us we're big on relationships so everything is relationship oriented we do have the go hit the streets sure but um even our house churches that we have we have house churches and then outreaches we'll have just key people that open up their homes in the city so it's it's awesome yeah that is yeah, yeah. a lot of organizing and administration but it's amazing <laughs> yeah that is now i imagine um with your background in sports mm -hmm. and then like you said uh the importance of team yeah. here at at bethel that mm -hmm. there, there there'd be a lot of parallels between totally you know um and so when when you're when uh when you're building something mm -hmm. um how do you how, how like and i think this is probably more of an organizational type question sure because oftentimes it seems like um as a visionary type leader we can have this dream this desire mm -hmm. and we think um 
I, 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 I've got what it takes to execute this. Yeah. I've got the passion. I can see mm-hmm. it. Nobody else can see it. Yeah. Um, and if I include people, it's mm-hmm. going to slow the process down. Yeah. Um, or if I include people, it could even jeopardize the integrity of, sure. of, of my vision. And so uh, there can be that kind of mentality, I think, sometimes mm-hmm. in ministry. I got, I got a dream. I'm going to do this, you know. Yeah. So uh, as far as just with your sports background and just playing uh, as part of a team, mm-hmm. knowing that team doesn't just happen without some sort of structure and totally. accountability what kind of what kind of advice would you give to leaders like how do you know that you're actually a part of a team yeah i think um you know in our environment and even with the team now i have six third years that just are jumped in and serving and uh and i always you know i always tell them uh, a leader's um, greatest strength over emphasizes their greatest weakness. And mm. I, I think right away I just give them permission to speak into my life. Let them know my weaknesses. Say, could you help me um, in that? Here's the dreams. Cast the vision. But also it's the give and take. I'm pushing towards a vision. And I think that's the beauty about this environment is uh, Bill has set such a standard that that he – he wants to see people go further than him. Mm. And so it's kind of, um, we catch some, some things are taught and some things are caught, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's just something that's embedded in this environment that like you raise people up to push them further than you. And so um, even in what we're doing now and what we're cultivating, even how Chris, like he's always championing and trying to give opportunities, um, speak into my life to help push us further and so i think one big aspect of a team is just you know that ability to believe in people see even who god's created them to be outside of maybe who they see they're created to be and and help as they're serving give them opportunities or speak into their life to to push them into that yeah and so i'd say that's that's a big thing in the empowering culture uh that that we probably you know um, we carry here. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that's very inspiring. You know, there, there was a book uh, written a, a few years back called The External Church, or mm-hmm. The External, and one of the, the, the arguments of the book is that on a long enough timeline, mm-hmm. most churches will become internally focused and mm-hmm. will lose its external focus. Yep. And um, and one of the things that we've seen, and, and this would be pretty common, that whenever you see a church plant in an area, they're radically external in their focus, mm-hmm. you know, because um, they're thinking, we got to get our core group. We got to, if, totally. we're, if we're going to survive, if we're going to make it, we got to be reaching out. But sometimes you can come into a place where it's easy to get comfortable yeah. and it's, and it's easy to kind of fall into like a maintenance mm-hmm. kind of a uh, mode versus kind of a, uh, versus this whole idea of making disciples of nations, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, um, you've been here a while and you've been overseeing this outreach team. How important is Mm -hmm. outreach as far as what it does culturally within the Bethel narrative? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, one thing I love about our environment is, you know, cultures created from the top down Mm. and then movements are birthed from kind of that grassroots up. Right. And so, um, you look at our leaders like Chris Valton, he's pioneering all this new stuff and he's looking outward. How can we impact? I'm going to take, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and throw it into our city. Like we're not, we're not, we talk about something, but I want to see it happen. And so just, um, he even empowered me. One of the things I do this year is I run a, every Thursday, I run a prayer meeting for the, the, I, I run it, set it up, but it's Chris Valton's prayer meeting. He comes when he's in town and, uh, we set it up, hand it over to him when, when, uh, we just kind of partner back and forth, but it's completely focused on our city, praying for the city leaders, praying it's, it's government as well, big government, uh, president, uh, but a lot of it is our city. And, uh, and so I'd say we're, we're, we're fueling that um, on so many levels, first in the heart, getting a heart for the city, and that's birthing in compassion, so we're not having to just tell people to go do stuff, but there, it's the compassion of the Lord welling up in us and like and, and moving people in directions that's outward focused, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's one component, and then we have, we have to, um, Every year we kind of look at the school, like what's working, what's not, what do we need to throw away? Hmm. Are we are we getting too internally focused? Is the gospel are are the students 
It's called the Bethel Scoop School of Supernatural Ministry. Wow. Is it still supernatural? Wow. Are we are we turning it inward focus? So we ask these wow. tough questions wow. Wow. and we look at like um are we still on the trajectory that we started on? Wow. Are we starting to waver towards, you know, uh, a more theology is good and having a, a great biblical foundation is super important but if we're not giving away what we've been given we're missing we're missing that that key component so um i would say we're constantly checking our hearts and like that's cool because it's so easy to get busy in this yeah, environment absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. i'm i i'm i'm around individuals like hey i need to slow down and bill will always see that's one of his main messages to our staff we have we have over 700 people on staff oh, wow that's and uh, he's like hey guys Busyness doesn't actually mean productivity in the kingdom, and he will challenge us to slow down, challenge us to make sure that we're aware of the presence, and kind of that Moses, God, That's if your awesome. presence doesn't go with us, we don't want to go. And you know how when you're in his presence, it's like you minister to him, and, and it, it is easier to naturally turn and love God and then love your neighbor. And so I would say... Um, just the really challenge us to keep the main thing the main thing. We're not perfect at it, yeah, but yeah. we're uh, we're trying to hold that course and make sure our students can can uh, can leave here and effectively love the people around them. Yeah, you guys are doing an amazing job, and just the tr the the track record and just the, mm. the 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 legacy. Like you said, going all the way back to fifty fifty four fifty four, which yeah. is interesting because I believe uh, the church where I'm pastoring, mm -hmm. Sierra Bible Center, I believe was founded in fifty five, which right is kind of kind of fun. Yeah. Hey, I, so I wanted to ask you. Um, uh, because you guys do so much here mm -hmm. at Bethel. So on one hand, you're a local, you're a local church. Yes. Yep. On the other hand, you're almost a university. Totally. You know, and um, but but now you're also a music label, mm -hmm. and um, and and you're all, you're a missions mobilizing. You know, there's mm -hmm. so many different yep. things that you guys are doing with such a level of, of excellence, um, internally or externally at, at the, as a people here here at Bethel. When you think about what is Bethel, mm -hmm. is there is there a, is there a term that you use for this prototype? Is there a you know when you think of what is Bethel? How would you describe it? Would you say we're a church or? You know, um, there's that whole movement component. Um, but when you get around and you're around the people, like my wife was Brian and Jen's assistant for three and a half years in the school. And, uh, and we watched how they stewarded family and how they'd say no to opportunities that people didn't even see um, to protect family. Mm. And, and the first thing that came to my mind was, I was like, I don't want it to sound cheesy, but I really feel like it's what we try to establish that that revival is family. Mm. And Bill always has this statement that the light that shines the furthest shines the brightest at home. Mm. And so um, just trying to keep that family um, like everything flows life flows from family wow. you know and and so eric and candace who've taken over the senior leadership role they've done a phenomenal job of just um how do you create family amongst ten thousand people or you know in this in this swirl of activity and i think they're doing a phenomenal job of establishing heart connections and culture and uh and that's why i love it i'm like um, my kids in the school and they're having these encounters with the Lord in school. They go to the Bethel Christian school and, and just like the authentic swirl. I think the way I would sum it up is like family, like we're, we're fighting to stay that family that, that it doesn't become a corporate environment, that it doesn't, you know, become a, just a movement, but family so how do you do that it's just I, one day at a time that culture of honor that you know i got grafted into of of um of you know bill always would say like um it only goes as far as the threat of honor and so us fighting to keep that and empower people that's that's how i see the environment that's why i love it because it doesn't feel like a job it feels like family yeah so what a great answer Thanks. yeah i mean i mean that, that that's incredible and to have to have something that is as massive and as as influential mm -hmm. and um uh and to have you sum it all up mm -hmm. as family i mean that, that that that's incredible i mean th that alone is a miracle that really that alone is, is supernatural <laughs> it really is you know yeah because it almost would seem like uh i i know that there's a, a level of of 
incredible ten- intentionality yeah. And, yeah. And, and a desire to follow the mm-hmm. favor, right? I've, I've heard, uh, I think Chris talk about that, following yeah. your favor. But it almost would seem as though Bethel has just, it, it, it almost would, like from an outside, outsider's yeah. observation, it doesn't seem like there's ever been, like I've never seen an ounce of drivenness sure, in sure. Bill. Yeah. Like when Bill preaches, right. I've never seen just an ounce, like like any sort of drivenness. It yeah. just seems like he's operates from such a place of rest. Mm-hmm. So to see to see the just the favor of God and the grace that's been on this yeah. community, just in a place of rest, just to almost stumble into into faith, you know. And totally. I don't say that, yeah. you know. Um, I know they they came from Weaverville, which is if you've been to Reading, <laughs> it's ninety thousand, but it feels small. It yeah. feels small. Yeah. But then you have seventy seventy five nations here, and it's like this beautiful melting pot. I was here when there was like one brother here, um, <laughs> Kelly Easter. He's like yeah. six foot seven, yeah. three hundred pounds, and now you walk around and you see just all these nations, and you're like, Lord, this is amazing what you're doing. And what I love is. Um, everybody's like there's so many phenomenal people that you're like you have a reverence like they could be a first year student but they've they just got off the crusade field of leading thousands and thousands to the lord and you're like you know that you're you're not just here to give them everything you've got you're also receiving from all these people from all over the nations so there's this like weighty invitation from the lord like here's the hearts of these individuals that have said yes yeah and uh and uh don't take it lightly. Steward it well, Angelo. You know what I mean. So yeah. I, I love the challenge and the the opportunity to to serve the nations and step into that. That's so, awesome. Um, but then, Reading used to be known as the armpit of California. <laughs> it used to be known as Poverty Flats. Wow. It used to be known as like the the gas stop for if you're going to Sacramento from Oregon. You okay. know you're gonna okay. st- stop and get gas in Reading. Okay. Uh, and uh, and it's just. It's beautiful to see how it's changed in like the 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 prosperity, not just wealth, but like the prosperity of soul and family That's awesome. and city. Um, after the fires we had this last year and just um, Reading was actually, there was so much generosity that it was, um, it was, I don't know who did the global, um, it wasn't us, but somebody put out something that Reading was the third most generous city in the nation That's at incredible. the time. That's incredible. And so it was Reading. Yeah, Reading. Right? <laughs> That's incredible. Reading. So it's yeah. it's neat. Now, when you travel and you're in, and you're on an airplane, you're sitting next to somebody, and yeah. they ask you, "So what do you do? Yeah. What do you tell them?" You know, one time I looked at somebody and I was like, I'm a ho- hostage negotiator. <laughs> so I bring people out of darkness into light. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> and I, I just have fun with that. You know, yeah. I it depends on the person. <laughs> it depends on the situation. Uh, but most of all, I want them to taste and see. Because um, sometimes you can say you're a pastor or sure. you can say something. And it, it gives them a reference of what they've experienced yep. versus, uh, you know, what we really do. Yeah, that's and right. So that's right. Um, it varies, but I, I like to have fun with that. And uh, mostly, um, I, I don't have these profound things, sure. but I'll just ask them. I'm like, I, I'm, I train and equip people in the school, um, Bethel School Supernatural Ministry, um, where we see God's power show up and lives changed. And just kind of, there's so many different avenues that I'll step into that, but but, but mostly just have fun with that's it. awesome yeah. that's awesome and like so as far as what you what you're doing like what is the most inspiring part of like like what part of ministry and what you're doing right now just brings the most satisfaction to yeah. you like when you think about your role here and mm. working with all these uh, uh, people of varying ages and backgrounds and nations yeah. Um, uh, yeah. what 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 lights you up the most about mm. really what you're what you're doing and what you're building here yeah Man, I think it's just uh, getting to get in the the teaching people how to get in the 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 can of worms or the mess of other people's lives wow. and be like be like just love people right where they are. Wow. Like I get to teach people how to see the gold in other people before they see it in themselves or who God created them to be and help call that out. And so you know, um, I remember we were. For years, we hung on with this guy that dug a hole under a bridge and just, he tried to jump off the dam. He just, um, super hurt and we just loved him. And I remember he said, you love me before I even loved myself. Wow. And wow. so I, I think, um, like 
meetings are good, you know, all that stuff. But like getting to go out and just love, you know what Heidi Baker says, stopping for the one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it just remembers what God pulled me out of, what he's done in my own life. And, and that just never gets old. I mean, that's, 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 I always, I always say it's like, we get to go on these adventures with the Holy Spirit. And, and so, um, obviously love just the, um, the worship culture, like his presence being in that, um, all the time and, and, uh, and just cultivating that. Um, but I love the beauty of, of going out yeah. and, and loving people. That's and awesome. Like, That's awesome. Man. Hey, what would you tell people like, um, that have like, they've never told anyone about mm-hmm. Jesus before. Yeah. Like, and the, the thought of that is just terrifying. Yeah. And, and may, or, or the thing I hear a lot of times is I'm not an evangelist. Totally. Or, um, I didn't even or, know what an evangelist was when I got saved, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or this, yeah. or this thought of like, no, that, that's for them. That, totally. Or that's for totally. young, I hear this mm-hmm. a lot too. Like, that's for young people. Yeah. Like, that's, that's a young people's game, yeah. just going out and talking to a stranger. Mm-hmm. So, is there anything, um, that you could say to yeah. encourage people yeah. that are listening that have maybe said any one of these kind of mm-hmm. kinds of reasons to to encourage them just to to be able to somehow organically share their faith with someone. Yeah, I would say like so many people um, get caught up in titles, and um, you just look at like I'll I'll say this many times like who wants more of the Holy Spirit in their life, and they're like. You know, 90% of the congregation is like, I do. And I'm like, it's like Jesus said, it's better that I go. It's to your advantage that I go and I'm going to send the helper. And uh, and I, I tell people, like, if you want him, like, he's the one that will empower you to be a witness. It says in Acts 1.8. So there's that dynamic. But then there's just the the beauty of of Matthew 25. Like a lot of us look to Jesus like, we want more of Jesus. I got to go to church. But he said, (laughs) what you've done to the least of these, you've done to me. And they're like, when did we do that? Like when you went out and loved that broken one, when you went to the prison. And so like getting people out of the mindset that like, um, like it's a beautiful invitation. And it's like, it's actually the the best place to grow and and people may have had a bad experience or a bad method but i i say um i see these moms that can like tell the most amazing stories to their kids at night and i'm like i'm like they are a gospel preacher like look at how that kid lit up and they just got to learn how to tell the most beautiful love story right and so people disqualify because the gospel gets buried it's good and so instead of us working that muscle, you know, like going to the gym. Yeah. And uh, and what does it say in John chapter four? Jesus said, "My food is to do the will of Him who sent me, to do the will of the Father." And 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 that's really. Then he goes on to say, "Lift up your eyes; the harvest is ripe." And like, I want to say to people, like, if you want to get nourished in the Lord, it's to, like. It's not just to hear from the pastor, but it's to do the will of the Father. Yeah, that's good. Which is the Great Commission. Like, if you want nourishment from the Lord, if you want to grow, food helps you grow, right? Yeah. If you go out and give away what you've been given, you're going to grow. Yeah, that's good. And so, that's good. you know, I just tell people, <laughs> like, really e- evangelism is easy. It's taking your story, finding out how to authentically give it out from from you, and, and taking that invitation of... I get to partner with the creator of the universe. I get to partner with with the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me. And so don't look at it as this duty that I have to, but look at it as this sweet invitation from the Lord. Like, God, you want to use me? And just just start stepping out in simple obedience. And I'm telling you, when it's what does it say in the Bible? It says those who refresh others themselves will be refreshed. So many times when we go out, we get to step into the 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 person getting delivered off drugs like their breakthrough i get to feel the affection of the wow, lord wow, that wow. he feels for them as they're getting set free and i i'll go tired and i'll come uh, back just energized like god's real he <laughs> loves us look what he did tonight i didn't even feel like going but i know i don't live by my feelings wow I'm a, we live by faith yeah and so that's that's the heartbeat that um we love to like like 
encourage people like it's an invitation from the lord to yeah that's step awesome into. that's really good yeah. very helpful yeah hey would you be willing to just like uh, uh just release a prayer absolutely uh, uh for boldness yeah. for just like fresh boldness yeah. uh that would come upon all of our listeners if, whether they're watching or listening absolutely um uh, uh you know l- l- like we're talking about tonight mm. we get busy totally. you know, we get busy we get busy with even just doing church stuff with mm-hmm. doing even sometimes kingdom stuff totally but uh yeah. um or with our various responsibilities and sometimes mm-hmm. we, we it's easy just to actually forget about people yeah you know people that 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 word that we live next to or that we're doing even doing life with but mm-hmm. we just kind of forget about the whole salt salt and light kind of part totally. so would you be would you pray for you know boldness as well as just opportunities like yep. divinely ordered opportunities yep. where we can just stumble into this mm-hmm. thing i always i always <laughs> challenge even myself but i'm like god i give you my schedule I wow. give you my agenda. Wow. I give you my time. I give you my day. And if you guys just, I'm just going to pray that and release that over you, that you would just surrender your most valuable possessions to him, which is your your time, your affections, your your schedule, and then just move on the little unctions. So I just, I just want to release that over you right now. And I just declare that um, you'd even feel his presence yeah. just come over you right now. It says, in his presence is the fullness of joy in Psalm 16. And I just released that right now that you'd feel his presence, that you would feel the affection, that same joy that he felt as he went to the cross. You would feel that for people and that you would you'd feel his heart. Because as you feel his heart and you see how he sees, it'll cause a boldness to rise in you. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit would fall on you right now right now in Jesus name and that all throughout homes as you're sitting in your home as you're listening in your car that you just feel that infilling of the Holy Spirit and you feel that boldness where the disciples that scattered uh, be- when Jesus died when when the, the the fulfillment of the Father came in Acts they were willing to to go and, and lay down everything and turn cities upside down I just pray for that same infilling right now yeah right now right now that god would fill your heart that you'd feel that real sense of overflowing right now where you are and that you'd feel most of all his affection just his love pouring in you because it says his perfect love drives out all fear so we just say lord fill him with fill him with your love so much i tell people this drink in his affections get like like Lift your adoration to the Lord so much that your fears, your past experiences, your worries of what could happen all fade away. And you just get so aware of how big He is. So I just declare that you get so aware of how big He is right where you are right now. That your, 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 what would feel, what felt small would turn into that, that roaring lion inside of you. It says the righteous are as bold as lions. And I thank you that the lion of Judah lives in you. And we just declare in your spirit right now that the lion of Judah would roar out of you in an authentic, genuine way. We bless you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Amazing. Amen. Thank you so much, yes. man. It was great to yes. great to meet you, man. Thanks for uh, connecting uh, us and just you know being a connector here and mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's amazing to be in your guys' atmosphere yeah. to be in your in your crib here. Totally. And uh, man, this was this was awesome. Let's yeah. do it again. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Yep.